show before the free show. We're doing it what's again. Up, what's up, nerds? Um, I don't know. I feel like this isn't a brand new studio anymore. Yeah. Like, we've already been here. Why can't we have a new studio every day? Yeah, that would be fun, wouldn't, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be fun? Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to the pre-show before the free show. I'm Greg. It's Ashley uh, here on this Tuesday. Uh, we, are, we are required, I think, by space law to talk about, in the pre-show, to have Eclipse talk. Because we all went outside in yesterday after the show. Uh, like, the, the, the sun and the moon conspired to try to overshadow the debut of our new studio yesterday, which, rude, honestly. I can barely hear you, by the way. Um, honestly, rude. And, and I'll be honest about this, like, there's been a lot of, so here in Dallas, for those who don't know, we were in the path of totality. And we were, and so there's been a lot of coverage around here of like, oh, the eclipse is coming, the eclipse is coming. I don't know. I wasn't super fired up about the eclipse. I thought it was just kind of a thing. Um, however, uh, so, so whenever the time came out, our new, um, our new chief content officer, Brooke, was like really, she was really jacked up on eclipse. She was like really fired up about the eclipse. And we, um, and so like we were supposed to have a meeting at 1.30 and she's like, we can't have a meeting at 1.30. We have to go outside and see the eclipse. I'm like, okay. So we did. And I will say that there were, um, there were a lot of people in the parking lot outside during eclipse time. And uh, there were a, couple, a lot of people wearing glasses. Not everybody, a couple of people raw dogging it. A couple of people raw dogging the eclipse which was uh, certainly a choice on their, on their, um, on their path. Um, but we, we, were, uh, we were out there during the eclipse. We sat on the back of Greg Powers' Test. truck. Uh -huh. Hi, you did it. Hi. Sat on the back of Powers' truck. Which rocks. And we watched the eclipse. I will tell you, when it got to totality and it got like real dark. Oh dude, it was awesome. That was cool. Yeah, you <laughs> you made the statement. You were like, "This seems dumb." I did. I, I, I was, I'm not I into was this. Not like, oh, on okay. Eclipse, not and like I was Brooke. like, Brooke was really stoked on the eclipse. Oh yeah. Well, I, I think that, and we talked about this heading down. I don't think you were with us right then, but the coolest part about that is like, not many people get to see full totality in their lifetime, like ever. Like I would say, a large sum of population do not get to see that unless you're willing to travel. Because like the next one that's coming in however many years, it's going to be in Australia. Like, there's no way ending up in that line of like sight is awesome. It was cool. It was awesome, and you know it. You said it afterwards, cool. I you said were it was like, cool. yeah. I said I was like, oh no, I get it. That was cool. Um, we did, you had the local, um, local TV on yeah. at your desk watching it because they had like coverage of it. Yeah. I swear, it's another reason why I could never do local news. Right. Because the amount of just like filler. <laughs> and listen, you are watching two people who can talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's a reason that like, you know, we have this show. It's because we can talk. But the amount of filler, it reminded me a lot of New Year's Eve coverage. Oh, yeah. Of like, you're not really talking about anything. Like, what are you going to do? Go up to people and be like, hey, tell me about the sun. You, you big on the sun? Uh, but it was, uh, you know, when it got to totality, it was cool. I was like, oh, wow, this is pretty cool. I, I don't know the next time I'll think about it, though. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. We got a cool I thought it together. was so cool. Um, that being said... I am also a, not only am I a science nerd, um, I'm also a broadcasting nerd in the fact of like any sort of out of the ordinary coverage that news stations do, mm. I'm like locked in. You, you know like, what? I love that. And maybe it's from a producing standpoint. I love watching people. Here's my big thing. 
And this is not a dig on news reporters by any stretch of the means. And here with a dig on news reporters. No, it's just a lot of times w as a news reporter, when you're going out, you're doing it as an assignment that is scripted for the most mm -hmm. part. Now, to be fair, it's not scripted by a lot of people don't have it scripted by someone else as an MMJ. I mean, that's the toughest job in mm -hmm. the world. You're doing everything yourself. But when they are on air, they have written out their script based off of what they do. And they're really good at it because I'm not good at that. Off of a written script or having to read no. off a prompter, no, I'm you and I both. god awful. But you, you both. put me out on Eclipse coverage and say, we need you to fill five minutes like I'm in my bag. And You're so like, baby, we've done 1,700 episodes Yeah, I was show. like, I can talk whatever you want me to. Right. But I always, it's cool to see people out of their element. Like, put me in front of a prompter and see how well it goes. Put news reporters that are so mm -hmm. used to doing more scripted, segmented, especially, I mean, every news reporter has a cadence to them, too. How does it happen when you're just asking someone about the sun? I, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I am a broadcast nerd that loves watching people have to do things that they're not necessarily, like, super comfortable with. I'll tell you who was also stoked on the eclipse. Hmm. Oh, Hank. Hank Tepper. Yeah, my guy. So he was, um, so at his school, mm -hmm. the eclipse happened during rest time, during nap time. Oh, no. And we thought about keeping him home, but we decided to send him to school. And I think for the school's sake, because look, they've got kids who are age two to age five, and these kids are dumb. They're just going to stare at the sun, which don't do that. Hot take. Um, hot take. Oh, get it? Because it sounds hot. Anyway. Boo. So he was, so he got home mm -hmm. and he wanted to, my wife my found wife. like the ABC news coverage and they went wire to wire, like wall to wall for like three and a half hours. Oh yeah. And they would go, they were in like Del Rio and then they were in somewhere else in Texas. And then they, I don't remember where it was. I'm, I'm trying to, and then they were in Dallas and then they were in like Arkansas. They were following the path. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was cool coverage. And <laughs> this just tells you how Hank Tepper's wired. They had like in the, on the bottom, which was very smart. They had like on the bottom, it's like, oh, like here's when totality ends in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And then like that got done. It's like, here's when totality starts in Niagara Falls. And so it's just a clock that kept counting down, which Hank Tepper, his jam. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I like sports. Oh yeah. Like, that's why I don't think he likes baseball because there's no clock. Right. But like with a like hard agree. Watch basketball. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. Oh, there's like two minutes left. Oh, it I, adds like, to I the excitement. That. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, he was stoked on Eclipse coverage. Yeah, Hank and I share a lot of similarities. I know. Yeah, I, I know. I've met you both. <laughs> like you know, you guys. Uh, if 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 your fiance weren't in the picture. Yeah, it, it, me and Hank. Hank would be like. Do you like grilled cheese? Yeah. And the answer to that question is yes. Okay. Now I'm going to need him to get on some old, like, we're going to have to wait a long time. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Wait about... But I will eat a grilled cheese with Hank anytime he asks. That is true. That is true. <laughs> anyway, happy eclipse. There's like another one tomorrow. Is that right? Uh, no. Oh, okay. When's the next eclipse? Uh, we should have another eclipse party. We can, we can make an eclipse party any time. I saw someone put, well, this is Texas related, so I'm going to say it real fast, but uh, I saw someone post a photo of the Bucky's sign in Katy with the sun behind it and was like, there's the eclipse. So anytime we're at a Bucky's, we can have an eclipse. On behalf of Dave Campbell's Texas football, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> it's the team expo. Texas. It is Texas football today, a show in the same studio. I'm sorry if you were tuning in for another new studio, but like we're probably going to be in this one for at least like a couple more shows. 
Just my, a handful. My name's Greg Tepper. I'm the managing editor of Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine, texasfootball.com, a corresponding website. Thank you for spending part of your day with us. Whether you're watching us live, texasfootball.com, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. We got to get back on Twitch. No. Okay. <laughs> or you're listening to us on the podcast, on the podcast vendor of your choice. Either way, thank you for doing your part to support your local mediocre internet show. I am sitting here, sitting over there at the helm today, making us sound good. In mission control, in the pickle pad. Oh, let's go. She's a Duchess of the Dorks. That's She's the Ashley winner. Pickle. That's the winner. The pickle pad? The pickle pad. Well, but it, it can't be the pickle pad because it doesn't have a, a bean bag yet. Yeah. Now we're thinking. Yes. Yeah. See? <laughs> I'm an idea man. The eclipse happens and suddenly, like, my whole brain opens up. Today is Tuesday, April 9th, 2024, 233 days until Thanksgiving. Happy birthday between two people that I think I often get confused with one another. Okay. Happy birthday to current Ranger great David Robertson. Okay. And happy birthday to Lil Nas X. Mm, yeah, same human. Um, I can't... Can't um, tell a difference. Just tough for me. I get those two confused. It's strange to have the same birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, it's episode 1,754. Nailed it. On today's show, folks... 55. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Didn't nail it. Uh, on today's show, folks, uh, we're going to talk a little college football. Specifically, we're going to talk about the G5. And in the shifting sands of college football, uh, are we uh, about to undergo a, a, a real makeover as far as group of five non-power football is concerned? Uh, we'll get into that. In the back half of the show, for the first time in the new studio, it's Math, Math Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Math Tuesday's back. <laughs> And we are going to be taking a look at recruiting, specifically which teams across the state, across the nation rather, and across the state, stay close to home as far as recruiting is concerned. We will talk about that coming up here at the back half of the program if you stick around with us. Do we have first four through the door? Uh, yep. We have, as I, I have like 17 things going on over here. You're doing great. Thank you. Um, Ace. TJ Hudson, Daniel Agnew, and Keith Kerr. Welcome in, fellas. Thank you, folks. We appreciate your courage. We appreciate you spending a little bit of your day with us. One thing to get to. So one of the cool things about having a desk is I can keep things under the desk. <laughs> I've got like a whole bar down here. Nice. So it makes that sense. explains the show, honestly. <laughs> Love um, it. <laughs> yeah, uh, that explains the show. But one thing I have down here. So you remember, Pickle, that our friends at Panini America sponsored our quarterback of the week um, award as they well did. as our quarterback of the year award. Mm -hmm. Now Panini America, do you know what Panini America does? Yeah, they do trading cards. They do trading cards. They're well, like, they do a lot of collectibles rather. Yeah, they're but like a collectible mainly thing. trading cards. I, when I think this is me, I'll yeah. editorialize and maybe our friends at Panini won't like me saying this. But like when I think of Panini America, I think of like cards. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and they're sick cards too. You mean like these? Wow! We got some giant trading cards. That is cards. DJ Lagway. Is, that is, in like, fact, that's him. <laughs> that is the most DJ Lagway it's ever been. <laughs> uh, we got these big Panini cards. And look, got stats on the back. Let's go. They're like real cards. So you got DJ Lagway. Uh, you've got Michael Hawkins, who, nice. by the way, Ooh. here's some here's synergy. A tease. Tomorrow, his brother Malik Hawkins will be in studio committing Yo. live in the commitment zone. Uh, we'll have D, uh, Malik Hawkins, but uh, maybe we'll have to give Michael Haw Mike Hawkins. <laughs> I don't know if he'll be here. His card. I don't know. I don't know. If he's here, Mike, you can have this. And if not, we'll give it to your brother and he can hold it hostage. <laughs> anyway, we've got that. <laughs> we've got Aiden Jacobson from Ingleside, the record-setting quarterback down there for the Mustangs. Got him. Got the cool stats on the back. Uh, let's see. Walker Yeah, Oberman, let's boy. go. Your boy, the official quarterback of Ashley Pickles Heart. Yeah, he liked my tweet of the studio yesterday. So um, <laughs> we got two thumbs up basically from, from Walker Overman, which is all Walker the verification that we need. Uh, our oh, your sweetheart. My boy. <laughs> this is Armando going up Luan. on Tepper's desk. I might keep this one. Armando <laughs> Luan from Sunray. Got him. Uh, and then our one eye quarterback of the year is, uh, is Hunter Hallmark from Verabest. We got him on there as well. And then Luke Carney uh, from Dallas Christian. Uh, are there. We've got these oversized cards. We're going to put these up on social media, stuff like that, and try to get these to, uh, to our, uh, our friends, the, the quarterback of the year. But anyway, it's not all the time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy with the mics. It's not all the time that we get giant trading cards. <laughs> but when we do. So, and, and you have a promise from me, dear viewer, 
Every time we have giant trading cards, <laughs> I will show you. I will show you, and I will stack them loudly on the desk, too. So, yes. anyway, thanks to our friends at Panini America for sponsoring our Quarterback of the Year award. All right, Pickle, let's talk a little college football. Okay. Let's talk a little college football, and, and we have talked a lot in the past couple of years here on this show about all of the things in college football that aren't football. Mm hmm specifically conference realignment, specifically TV deals. It does seem like being a college football fan these days, at least like an online college football fan and somebody who keeps track of things, requires you to have like a PhD in a variety of different topics, mm -hmm. whether it's like television contracts or economics or sociology or uh you know and even more than that like just being able to comprehend the amount of rules yes because uh, there is so many rules <laughs> there are so many rules. and and we made a point i think i made the point when we were in the bachelorette pad a couple of weeks ago that i look at the state of college football right now and the way that it's trending and i am pretty concerned about it from a viewership perspective and from like a fan perspective. I think there's a lot of things that have happened in the past couple of years that are ultimately going to make for a worse product mm -hmm. writ large for college football writ large. Now, I want to be clear for Michigan things and are for going just fine. USC and for Texas, no notes. Things are probably going pretty well for you. Keep doing what you're doing. But, but I would say that if you are somebody who enjoys the whole hog. Mm -hmm. If you want it from rooter to tutor, right? As a friend of mine is fond of saying. Six and say there's a lot of there's a lot of phrases being used today. Then I think that the health of the sport is in peril. When you take a look at the way that the college football playoff is expanding, now you can you can argue if you think the college football uh, playoff should be expanded, it shouldn't be expanded, it should expand more, it should contract, whatever you think, that's fine. But the way the conversation has been shaped has been almost exclusively about getting more power teams in the playoff, getting more brand names in the playoff. These conversations about expanding the playoff are not about finding a way to get Troy into the playoff. No. They are about finding a way to get Penn State into the playoff. Mm -hmm. They're about finding a way to get a nine and three Mississippi State team in the playoff. Yep. A it, Florida State. Florida State, right? This is not, right now, it is, I think, being laid bare, something we've been talking about, quite frankly, I'm not here to toot our own horn, but toot, 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 toot. We've been talking about this for like three years. Oh, yeah, because it was, it was evident prior to the expansion of the playoffs with the creation of the playoffs in and of himself mm -hmm. it was clear that there was fixing to be not only this divide that everyone knew about to where they're separate names it was about to part the red sea yeah the the gap was fixing to be the grand canyon it was and you're seeing that more and more and there is a question of basically which side of the gap you're on now there are some teams that I think we can all agree are going to be in the upper echelon. In, the, in this new, when you take a look at the new world order of college football, Texas and Oklahoma and A&M don't have anything to worry about. Oregon doesn't have anything to worry about. No. Michigan and, and Ohio State don't have anything to worry about. Conversely, there are a, lot, there are a fair number of teams on the other side that I think they understand their role in, in, in the college football landscape, and it ain't with Ohio State, nope. okay? Respectfully, Sam Houston, UTEP, right? Uh, there are those programs that, especially I look at like Conference USA, the MAC, mm -hmm. the Mountain West, a few of those conferences that are just like, they, they are not going to be in the upper echelon of the, of the sport no. whenever the sport They're not settles. even going to be in like this weird gray area mid section, so, which is and really where the divide is starting to happen. That's where it gets interesting. Because to me, what do you do with the Big 12? Mm -hmm. Right? Is the Big 12, because it's going to settle somewhere. Mm -hmm. Does the Big 12 end up falling closer to the SEC? Yeah. 
or does the Big 12 end up falling closer to Conference USA? It's a spectrum, right? Right. But there is a hard divide coming. Oh, yeah. Like, there I, is the, the gap. You mentioned the Red Sea. The gap between the haves and the have-nots is growing. Mm -hmm. And I think another conference that's right on that teetering line would be the ACC. Mm-hmm. Because take SMU. If you want to put this in the terms of Texas yeah. College, take, take SMU as an example. They moved from the American, mm -hmm. which was in the upper echelon of group of five for a long time. It was, it was the best group of five, five. conference. Yes. Yeah. So they, they kind of led that for a while. They were in a league of their own, and then they moved to the ACC. And you're thinking, all right, finally, Houston, same way. Finally mm -hmm. get to the Big 12. We've made it. Now it's like, meh. So like <laughs> Houston shows up in the Big 12 mm -hmm. as Texas and OU are leaving. Yep. Right? Now, the Big 12 has sturdied its ranks, at least in numbers, mm -hmm. bringing in Colorado, the Arizona schools, BYU, yeah. et cetera, Utah, et cetera. For SMU, the a they show up to the ACC, mm -hmm. and now Florida State and Clemson are both basically suing the ACC to get out of the ACC. Yep. And my question is, look at these two pictures. Yeah, they're <laughs> the exact the same picture. <laughs> it's the same thing. The two, power, the two most powerful entities, at least from a football perspective, and I know we just got done with college basketball, and congratulations to Mallory Hartley and her UConn Huskies for winning the <laughs> national championship. But when you talk about college athletics, we have to be honest and, and intellectually honest about this. Football is what's driving the show. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's monetarily, there are numbers close. that you can prove it. Like, not, close. not up for debate. And so I understand North Carolina is very good at basketball. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's a doesn't, singular school. That, is, that doesn't move the needle as far as a TV deal is concerned, which is ultimately what this happens. Have, have, have. I want to direct you to an article that they have up on Yahoo from about, when was it? From February 19th. From Ross Dellinger, who I think is a really, really smart, sharp reporter, he wrote a story, basically, the headline is, as college football's elite is engulfed in a power struggle, G5 left try just trying to survive. And that is ultimately what happened. There's a great quote, I think, from Jamie Chadwell, who's the head coach uh, at Liberty. He said, quote, we're a farm system. No matter who you are, you're going to have to try hard to hold on to your top players. That gets taxing. We are taking the approach that if a freshman plays and he does well, we're only going to have him for one more year, end quote. These are the stakes of what G5 is doing. And we can certainly have a conversation as to how much Ohio State has in common with Southern Miss. I get it. But for now, they, for now theoretically, they were in the same boat. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be the same going forward. No, because it's almost like you're having to go through two high school recruiting systems if mm -hmm. you're not in the upper echelon of, of five-star athletes. The other side of that, too, is a G5 program now will never, ever get to the level of being good enough right. to send someone to a playoff because they're just a farm system at that's this exactly point. That's exactly right. They're just a stepping stone to okay, you're a three-star coming out of high school. Let's get you in a weight room. Let's get you bulked up. Let's get you on a health plan. You get bigger. You get to go play at Alabama in two years. Uh, like, I want you to think about a team. Let's take UTSA as an example. UTSA, when Jeff Trailer arrives, he recruits well. Mm -hmm. He develops well. They win. They win. And, like, there was that. You can see that the way that process builds. And yeah. now the program is going well, right? Mm -hmm. But there was a... There's a seed, it grew out of it, it continued to blossom, right? Yes. I'm here to tell you that UTSA might be the last program to ever do that. Yeah. Because I think that these group of five teams are going to consistently struggle to get quality players. Mm -hmm. They're going to consistently struggle to hold on to quality players. And as a result, there, there is an argument to be made that they are better off just splitting off entirely mm -hmm. from those from those power conferences and just saying, "All right, we're going to go. We're going to have our own national championship mm -hmm. because we know we're never going to. We are plain and simple. Texas State is functionally ineligible to be the college football national champion. Like they could go if they went thirteen and zero this year. Well, with the expanded expansion, playoff, they, they get the might. playoff." But they'd probably get like a seven seed. 
they go on the road and they play Michigan State. Well, Michigan State's a bad example because nobody <laughs> likes them. Michigan. Trash. They play Michigan in Ann Arbor, right? Mm -hmm. Michigan in Ann Arbor, and they would. And, and at that point, you are overmatched. Right. Because, and not from a coaching perspective, and I would say not even from a personnel perspective, mm -mm. but from a resources perspective, that they are able to go out, and especially with NIL, go out and get a quarterback and pay him you know, $100,000 a year to be their quarterback. Texas State just doesn't have it. And you want to take it a step even further of, say they did split apart. Mm -hmm. and or Okay, I guess say they didn't split apart, but the other thing that is going to get even more wild, which is like the big point of conversation right now in college football, mm -hmm. is the fact that if G5 programs have to start looking at their roster buildup of it being guys that are only going to be here for two years, that will affect the high school ranks as well because you're going to start you're not going to try and bring in kids that you can develop and you can go. It's going to be more of those situations. And some coaches do this. Of We're going to hit the transfer portal hard. Mm -hmm. And we're going to bring in guys that can give us two years and then get out. Because we're not interested in bringing in the next set of guys and really developing them. We will we'll move on here in a moment. But there's one person that I, that, uh, upon kind of developing this segment and thinking about this segment, that I thought about a lot. And it's Jake Spavitol. Spavitol. Yep. And that's exactly where I was going with that. Jake Spavisol, former coach at Texas State. And you remember there was a couple years ago where he took one high school kid? One. In a, in a class? I think one year he didn't take any. He might have taken zero. Yeah. Correct. And understandably, that drew the ire of a number of people. The oh, yeah. THSCA was not happy. High school coaches were not happy. Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, you're supposed to be your Texas State. Why aren't you taking Texas, Texas kids. kids, high school mm -hmm. kids? And, and I don't want to put words in Jake Spavitol's mouth, but I believe his thought process was, well, I'm not going to be a farm system for somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to win. Yep. I'm trying to keep my job. And so there are these competing, there are these competing incentives. Yeah, because you have the Jeff Trailer method of taking all high school kids, mm -hmm. basically, coaching them up, having success. And then there was the other ones of, no, we're just going to, yeah. Pull some people out of the transfer portal. Anyway, uh, the, the sands of college football are shifting, and I'm not sure the G5 is going to end up in a better place. So, something to keep in mind. We are at Texas Football Today. We're here every weekday at noon on TexasFootball.com, talking football in the Lone Star State. You can follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Dave Campbell's. Follow us on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Dave Campbell's. And, of course, see us at TexasFootball.com. want to invite you to go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe. Uh, to become a Dave Campbell's Texas football subscriber. We are hard at work on the 2024 summer edition of Dave Campbell's Texas football featuring Ashley Pickle on the cover. We finally did it. Yo, she yo, finally yo, wore yo. us down. She the said, cannons got big enough that they couldn't <laughs> deny it at this point. <laughs> uh, we are hard at work on the 2024 summer edition of Dave Campbell's Texas football. You can get your copy of the magazine mailed to you before it hits newsstands. Be the envy of everyone on the block. Mm -hmm. You go to texasfootball.com slash subscribe. And... A year of access to Texan Live. Let's go. Our streaming platform where you can watch hundreds and hundreds. Over like 1,500. God. We just keep broadcasting. A lot of, a lot they, of programming. You just can't stop us. It's live sports. We, we cannot be stopped. If you like live sports, subscribe. TexasFootball.com slash subscribe. That's a, that seems like a good marketing Plan. Well, literally, because it's if you subscribe to TexasFootball.com, then you get access to every sport possible. No, you you want water polo? TexasFootball.com. Yeah, because like there's um, like there's baseball season right now, right? Uh, like, yeah, we've got uh, well, our guys are broadcasting state soccer, uh, mm -hmm. but we've been doing soccer forever, and then yeah, softball and baseball season are right around the corner, so that's always really really fun. And two, it's kind of fun like for us football nerds because a lot of football players, especially in the smaller schools, mm -hmm. are like unbelievable pitchers and so it's like we'll we'll get out there and we'll like ace whitehead was always the perfect yep. example from land passes we get out there and we're like oh my god we thought he was a good football player look how good he is at baseball pickles name's ace correct <laughs> okay you know what touche texasfootball.com slash subscribe coming up here in just a moment math tuesday but first a word from these goods and services <clears throat> Hi, 
I'm Jennifer Potter, Executive Director of Be Well Texas. Too many people are struggling alone these days and alcohol and drug deaths are increasing. We started Be Well Texas to offer high quality, science-based addiction treatment and recovery services anywhere, even at home. We provide compassionate, caring support virtually or in person. In many cases, there is no cost for treatment if you don't have insurance, really. Welcome to Be Well Texas. We're glad you're here. Wing is the largest residential drone delivery provider in the world. Delivering to your home in less than 30 minutes. Order using an app just like other popular delivery services and Wing's automated drone takes care of the rest. It's fast, safe, and sustainable, and it's now delivering to parts of Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. You can learn more at wing.com slash Texas football. Again, that's wing.com slash Texas football. Born and bred in Texas hits a little different, as it should. Texas love doing business with fellow Texans. VCR now takes its Texas roots as seriously as its many partnerships with schools and universities around the state. It's also why we're so proud to promote our brand in the pages of the Texas Bible, Dave Campbell's Texas Football, and on the airwaves of Texas Football Today. Driven by producing quality broadcast video, state-of-the-art audio, and LED video scoreboards at affordable prices, VCR now makes sure to listen to your needs in its athletic department before recommending the next best steps. Building great products is our business, and it's our focus on building meaningful long-term partnerships with our clients that sets us apart. From our 24-7, 365-day help desk, the training lab in our hometown of Red Oak, or our sports marketing business plan that puts money back in the hands of our athletic departments we support, VCR Now is built to last. Reach out to us today at info at vcrnow.com or by calling 855 855- Go VCR now. Again, that's info at vcrnow.com or by calling 855 Go VCR now. Back here on Texas Football Today, I'm Greg Tepper. That's Ashley Pickle. And, and we've had a lot of change here at Dave Campbell's Texas Football with our new studio and just, you know, an expanded office. But one thing that doesn't change is that Pickle, it's Tuesday. And on Tuesday in the offseason, Math Tuesday. Math Tuesday. Math Tuesday. Math Tuesday. Here on Texas Football Today, America's most celebrated segment. Correct. Which we dive into the numbers and talk a little bit about uh, what makes football tick across the state of Texas and, and beyond. And today we're going to take a look at beyond. So tomorrow's a big day here in the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Studios. We're going to have Malik Hawkins from Frisco Emerson committing live right here on our airways behind this desk. He'll be here behind this desk. And we will be, we will have Malik in here pulling the trigger. Uh, part of our recruiting coverage that, um, that Greg Powers is, is obviously so integral uh, in, in doing. But one of the things I want to talk about is take a look at the 2024 recruiting world. And the 2024, you know, the signing class. We're hard, we mentioned we're hard to work on the, on, on the summer edition of Dave Campbell's Tech Football. And we have a, a robust recruiting section there. And one of the things, Pickle, that I find really interesting in diving into these numbers is seeing which teams like to stay close to home. It used to be back in the old day, Pickle, back in the old days, people would just recruit the players that were nearest to them. Right? There wasn't this national recruiting kind of world. Now, everyone's recruiting nationally. Everyone's got access to, every, to, to everyone. Um, it used to be that you, know, you could keep a secret. I'm a big, I'm a big believer that like, there's no such, like sleepers are not really things anymore because like everyone, everyone has huddle. Oh yeah. Actually, everyone's yeah. got tape out there. Everyone's got social media. We're sharing information. It's a national recruiting space. So what I wanted to do was look at both ends of the spectrum which programs stay close to home and which programs like to go out shopping. And, and, and I'm focusing only on high school recruits here, not focusing on junior college signees. Only high school signees. Take a look at the 2024 signing class and which teams across the nation stayed closest to home. Let's go to the big board. You can see up here. And at the top, this is a segment that's gonna make our friend Joey McGuire very happy. Texas Tech. Texas Tech 
with 100% of their signing class sign from the state of Texas. Uh, 100%, 20 out of 20. The most local shopping team in America. Who is shocked? Now, a couple of things, and we'll get, we'll get more into this. Obviously, this is reflective of not just their strategy, mm -hmm. but also the breadth of their so-called supermarket, right? right? It is going to be very hard for UMass to recruit entirely within the state of Massachusetts. But for Texas, they have sealed the border. For Texas Tech, they have sealed the border. They have 100%. Same with FIU, Florida International, 100%. Makes sense. As well as Sam Houston. How about that? The Bearcats, with 100%, the only three FBS programs in, in America to recruit entirely within their borders. Texas Tech, Sam Houston, and FIU. Not far behind, North Texas. Cool. Eric Morris, doing work in Denton to seal the borders and make sure they are recruiting local. 28 of their, 26 of their 28 signees are from the state of Texas. Which, a, a side comment here, both Casey Keeler at Sam Houston and Eric Morris from North Texas are not originally from the state. So you want to talk about like drinking the Kool-Aid and buying in, mm -hmm. that's it. Speaking of Texas, G.J. Kinney at Texas State shopping local as well. 11 of their 12, the Texas State's F, uh, uh, signees, are from the state of Texas. San Jose State up there as well, 90.9%. California, again, another very talent-rich area of, of America. But this bottom one kind of surprises me. Mm -hmm. Rice, Mike Bloomgren and company, sealing the borders, nine of their 10 high school signees in the class of 2024 from within the state of Texas. The reason that surprises me is I know we've talked a lot about the, um, the, the recruiting world for Rice and how it's a little bit different for them because of the academic standards, but for them to both meet the academic standards and also be committed to recruiting within the state of Texas, I think it's kind of remarkable. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Those are the teams that shopped the most local within uh, their respective state. That's one end of the spectrum. Now I want to take a look at the other end of the spectrum and the teams that did all their shopping or almost all their shopping outside of their home state. And again, part of this, it's, it's kind of six to one half, you know, part and parcel with how many recruits come from your state. There are a couple pro teams though that I don't think there's really an excuse. There were, if we go back to the other one, there were a grand total of six programs that recruited all of their pro high school signees from outside their home state. Kansas signed 17 high school players, none from the state of Kansas. Western Kentucky, 13, did not sign any uh, from, from the state of Texas. From, from the state of Kentucky. Liberty, the Flames, we just got done talking about Jamie Chadwell. They're recruiting nationally. Uh, out of their 10, none of them came from their home state. Colorado, zero of their eight came from the state of Colorado. Now, there is an extenuating circumstance named Neon Dion there yep. that he wants to be a national recruiting power. Mm -hmm. That's certainly, you know, grain of salt there. New Mexico State, no signees from the state of New Mexico. And then Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech is doing the Jake Spavital thing. They only signed one high school player. It was not from the state of Louisiana. Which a little bit surprising considering Sonny Cumbie was at mm -hmm. Texas Tech prior to that. Now, that being said, it was under Matt Wells and not mm -hmm. um, under Joey McGuire. So a little bit difference there. But a little bit surprising yeah. to me on that one, only yeah. with one recruit. I, I guess that's him. not that hard. But still. Yeah. And then finally, to lump in a national power, Clemson. Only one of their 22 wow. high school signees are from the state of South Carolina. Uh, Dabo Swinney, obviously a national power. But I find that to be really interesting. Now, some of these I think you can understand, right? Um, New Mexico State. New Mexico does not put out a ton of high-end FBS caliber prospects. Mm -hmm. it's just, that's not an insult, it's just the facts, right? Not a surprise that they would go shopping elsewhere. Colorado, is that's a, that's a purposeful thing, in my opinion. I think there are co players within the state of Colorado that they could recruit, but obviously they want to go about things in a certain way. But for Kansas, quite frankly, to go 0 for 17 out of Kansas is a little bit surprising to me. Um, and then for Clemson, they have uh, no, uh, no, only one of their 22 from South Carolina. 
Uh, it's an interesting look at which teams like to seal the borders and which don't. You know, I'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer, but it is particularly interesting to see the direction and the strategy that different uh, college football programs employ to bring in their talent. Uh, but there were, you know, state of Texas doing, doing well with, uh, uh, what, f was it five teams? Yeah. Five of those seven teams from within the state of Texas with 90 plus percent of their high school signings, uh, signings come from uh, within the Lone Star State. Um, coaches want to seal the borders. That is for darn sure. Uh, and that is Math Tuesday. Math Tuesday. Let's go to Mission Control for America's second favorite segment. Final thoughts, Ashley Pippen, our chief final thoughts correspondent. I just, yep, correct. I realized something was spelled wrong, so I'm not even going to put up that graphic because, you know, it happens. Mm. Um, I guess day two of this thing, it went well again. I wouldn't say it went well. Okay. Well, I guess I'm that's tired of studio. Thought. I'm kidding. Okay. Throw it we do, away. We do have like what's funny is that like we are we're here and we we love it here. There's still some things that we're like working on. Like, oh yeah, that's it, like that. it's funny because it's hard for me like very much enjoy the content of the show today, but my brain is all there's half of my brain that's focused on the content, and then there's half of my brain that's like looking at things and like okay, what do we need to change? What do we need? And that's gonna take me a, about a week probably. Well, and, we're, and we're trying to figure out how this place works too. Yeah. <laughs> Like, <laughs> like, there's just like, a lot of small tweaks that I don't know I'm how sure much the viewers would realize. Some of them, maybe others are just like, I'm a sicko, like we've talked about. I'm sure some people are looking at this and they're just like, for example, this is the first time I've ever been lobbed up. Yeah. Like a lavalier mic instead of a, the, like a, a stick mic. Mm -hmm. um, that'll take some getting used to. Yeah, we're in separate rooms, so that's different. But again, just going back into this, you have a headset in that people don't know about. Like all that kind of stuff is what's going on in my brain right now. So yeah. final thoughts is like a throw yeah, up what are your a final, final thoughts, thoughts like, <laughs> entertain you know? the people yeah. <laughs> yeah anyway that's gonna do it for us remember tomorrow malik hawkins Let's committing go. live in our studio noon tomorrow greg powers will be along with us to help break it down that's gonna do it for us thanks for spending a little bit of your day with us follow us on twitter at dctf like us on facebook facebook.com slash dave campbell's follow us on instagram instagram.com slash dave campbell's and of course see us at texasfootball.com for ashley pickle i'm greg tepper vince young please meet your player of the year trophy we'll see you tomorrow on texas football today